It's me, OG Duffy, back with another versus video. And my God, have we got some systems for you on this one. So before we get into it, the mighty Bubble Bobble. My memories of Bubble Bobble are, I can recall it at the arcade. I do remember it. Uh, it's one I never played. Um, and I'll be honest, the reason being is in the same sort of row of arcade cabs at the time, uh, there was a Star Force and a Wonder Boy, and if I recall, a Side Arms, and I, I used to really enjoy them three particular games. Although that said, someone, there was always people playing Bubble Bubble. So I remember looking at it and I thought to myself, a bit overrated, I thought, but it was always busy, it was always popular. Um, I've grown to love this game in recent years. It's a game I play on my main cab all the time, honestly. It's, and if you've not played Bubble Bubble, do so, all right? Not to be confused with Puzzle Bubble, of course. Now, this was a great game uh, that I really enjoy now. And like I say, but it passed me by back then. But we're going to be looking at this game in depth on various systems. So, because there's so many systems I'm looking at this week, a total of 14, yes, 14 I'm getting through. 14? Then it means I'm gonna have to break them up into segments. So as always, firstly, we're gonna look at the arcade version because hey, we need to see what we're comparing. Then I'm gonna go to the 8-bit home computer systems of the day and I'm gonna be looking at the ZX Spectrum the Commodore 64, the Amstrad CPC, and the BBC Micro. Yes, the BBC Micro doesn't feature very often in these, but when it does, it's always interesting to look at, because those that watch the channel will know I'm not a huge fanboy of the BBC, because I saw it as an educational tool rather than a gaming machine. But hey, maybe I'm swayed this week. After we've looked at the 8-bit systems, we're then going to look at the 16-bit computer home systems of the day, uh, namely the Commodore Amiga and the Atari ST. Them two powerhouses are going to go at it. Then I'm going to be looking at the 8-bit consoles of the day, the Sega Master System and the Nintendo NES version. And we'll see how they uh, do in this versus battle. Then... I will look at the handheld versions. We're talking Game Boy Advance, the Nintendo DS, and the Sega Game Gear will all go head to head in their own little section. And finally, to conclude all versions, we'll be looking at the Sega Saturn version and the PlayStation 1 version, both absolute classic consoles. That's a lot to get through. So, without further ado, arcade version first, as always. And remember, stick around for my verdicts at the very end. Here we go, Bubble Bobble. Released in arcades in 1986 by Taisho, Bubble Bobble featured two characters, Bub and Bob. They're two like little dragon creature things, really. Uh, and you could choose which one to play, obviously based on green or blue. Um, there was a total of 100 levels to this. And uh, in a nutshell, you blow the bubbles to trap the enemies inside. And then you burst the bubbles, and when you do so, they drop items. You pick up these items, and various items give you different amounts of points. The overall game of the game, of course, is to go and rescue, you've got it, your girlfriends. Ah, why do they always have to rescue the missus? I don't know. Ah, an early game, this was in, uh, noticeable. It had multiple endings, so it was quite rare for its time. It was quite good for that, really. Um, overall, a very good game. Now, we're going to be looking at lots of different systems, as you know. Um, and I'll warn you now, this tune is going to be an earworm and features in every single version we're looking at, all except one, which we'll come to very very shortly. First of the 8-bit home systems we're looking at is this offering from the Amstrad CPC. You're probably thinking there's no sound. There it is. But as you can hear, there's absolutely no music at all. Uh, the original release of this, which is the one we're looking at, plays really badly. The graphics are poor, 
there's no music, just some real basic sound effects. It's almost as if they wanted this to fail. It is a real, real shame because the Amstrad is capable of so much more. Uh, there was a homebrew version released, um, which is just so much better than this. But, as you guys know, I try to stick to the original versions for these Versus videos where uh, possible to make it fair. So all in all, our first outing on the 8-bit systems is, uh, is a bit poor, really. But at least you had a little break from that earworm, which is coming up real soon for every system now. Next up we take a look at the BBC. Now this has really surprised me. Unfortunately this was never officially released as it was created just as the BBC sales of the computer system was starting to wane and its popularity had dipped massively. Uh, Rainbow Islands had just been set out on the other systems released so the company uh, that wanted to release it um, thought it's not really financially viable the, the sales are going and it's an older game now because obviously Rainbow Our Islands which is the, uh, the follow up to this was released on the other systems um, so it's a real shame um, overall I'm really impressed now that those who watch our channel they know I'm not a BBC Micro fan uh, I grew up um, viewing it just as an educational tool and to me it was boring and not as good as home computer systems that I was used to but this looks really impressive. The colours are great, it plays well, the sound was really well done. Oh, much respect to the BBC here, honestly. I tip my hat to this system. I've seen it in a new light and uh, I have to apologise really for, for slagging this machine off in the past. Absolutely awesome. Well done BBC. <laughs> Next up for the 8-bits, we're looking at Bubble Bobble on the Commodore 64. Now this is a great conversion, really playable. Uh, it's that alright, as you can guess, it's probably not going to look as good as the 16-bit uh, the home computers which we're looking at shortly, but I can tell you this played really, really well, the gameplay made up for it, and of course the infamous SID chip comes into its own yet again on this. Uh, reproducing that great great tune um, an absolutely really good conversion for an arcade game um, if I'd have bought this back on my Commodore 64 and I was a fan of this game at the time I wouldn't have been disappointed at all I mean a really really well converted game so uh, a great job on the Commodore 64 for this one <laughs> system we're looking at for the 8-bit home computers is this the ZX Spectrum version now all in all I have to say I was quite impressed with this um, the graphics or the sprites and that of course are monochrome but hey we've come to expect that from the Spectrum haven't we you know um, the sound I think is very good and they, they uh, attempted that that great tune which is now burying its way nicely into your heads folks uh, lovely little earworm that it is uh, a bit distorted the sound on this I found um, but overall played quite nicely it was uh, it was very playable graphically it was okay and of course as I said you had that monochrome issue but overall I was quite impressed I would not have been upset if I'd have got this back in the day so uh, good job for the spectrum really now that concludes the uh, the 8 bit home computer system for, uh, conversions of Bubble Bobble. Um, but let me know in the comments, guys, did you own any of these? Were you a big Bubble Bobble fan? And if so, which version did you own? And did it live up to your expectations? Uh, so far, I'm quite surprised. I mean, there's been one disappointment, but we'll come to that in my verdicts at the end anyway. <laughs> And now we 
come to the 16-bit home computer systems. Uh, looking at the Commodore Amiga version of Bubble Bobble first. Um, as you can see, and as you would probably expect, the graphics and the sound are very good on this version. But I think you would expect that. You know, it's a 16-bit home computer system. It's a quite an upgrade. Um, but there were some faults with this, and one of the faults was um, instead of having like um, a, a four-way movement and like a joystick and two buttons, one for fire, firing your bubbles and the other button to uh, jump, they decided the designers, in their infinite wisdom, that you must push up on the joystick to jump. Uh, that's all well and good, but it, it just detracted completely from the gameplay. And as you know, we're all about gameplay on this channel, so that was a bit of a poor decision. Also, it's when you were firing your bubbles, there was a bit of a delay um, when the screen got a bit busy sometimes with the, the bubbles. Um, it's, you, it, on the arcade, you could really rattle them off quick. But with this, they just didn't release as fast and as quick. So, a bit of a disappointment overall. But, as you'd expect, as I said, looked lovely, sounded great. And next up, the Atari ST. Again, as you would expect, very, very similar, this one, to the um, Commodore Amiga. Very similar. Um... If anything, though, the only thing I could notice here was that the sound, the, 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 not the sound so much, but the music sounded slightly different, but that's minuscule, it's, it's hardly noticeable, to be fair. Um, this suffered the same problems as the Amiga version as well. Um, the, the control system, pushing up uh, on the joystick to uh, to do the jump was, was a ball ache, honestly, really was. Um, and it was just easier if you'd have had a button for it. Uh, equally as well, the bubbles. The release system thing was the same again. It was you couldn't rattle off as many as you could, uh, like in the original game. And uh, the, the other systems have managed it. So why the ST and the Commodore Amiga didn't, I don't know. But hey, maybe you guys have got some information because you are a font of knowledge, people. So do let me know in the comments. Uh, why why did the the programmers of this decide not to go for button control proper? Mm. Upsetting, really. It would have been so much better, you know. Now we come to our first console looks, and uh, this is the Sega Master System version of Bubble Bobble. And what a fine, fine job the guys at Sega did with this. I mean, it's just absolutely brilliant. Um, I mean, graphically, looks great. The sound was pucker. The earworm, I hope, is really doing its job on you guys now. Because uh, I, I had to listen to it a lot, so you guys can. Actually, it's a funky little tune. Let's be honest, it's a good little tune. Very, It suits the gameplay marvellously. But the big thing with this Sega Master System version, compared to all the others, was the original version of this game had 100 levels. The Sega Master System version had an extra 100 levels, totaling 200 levels. So not only were you getting a great arcade conversion, you were getting one that was actually added to massively. So really, you got to tip your hat to Sega on that. So great job by uh, on the Sega Master System for Bubble Bobble. Uh, brilliant conversion. <laughs> Nintendo NES, or the entertainment system as it become known. Um, Bubble Bubble on this looks very nice, um, sounds good, graphics are good, plays very nicely. Um, so all in all, another good, good, good conversion. Um, what can I say really? This also featured uh, the two player option as well, as did all the systems we've looked at thus far. And uh, it was another good job, another great conversion. So uh, all in all, it's going to be tough to score this one, you know, because uh, all conversions so far have been pretty good standard, all except one, of course. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
And now we come to the Nintendo DS system. Um, as you can see here, it, it, it converted very, very nicely indeed. Almost arcade perfect, pretty much, really. Um, it was bought as a package called Bubble Bobble Revolution. Um, two versions. You had a classic version, which we're seeing now. Uh, and only as that's the original, obviously. Uh, and this looks, sounds, and it plays, as I say, just like the arcade original did. It utilised the DS wireless link. So if you had a friend who had a DS and the game, you could do co-op play uh, using that feature. Uh, it's a shame that the other game in the package is not as good as this one, as this was a brilliant conversion. So, spot on from the Nintendo DS. So, in the first of our handhelds, uh, we've started strong. Let's we'll see how the Game Gear and the, uh, the Game Boy Advance do. Another Nintendo version, this time on the Game Boy Advance. Now, this was also released on the original Game Boy and the Game Boy Color, but we are not including them in this versus video, simply because they're completely different games. They're not based on the arcade original, so I didn't think it was fair to include them, okay? Now, the advanced version here that we see, uh, it's called Old and New, and it come packaged like that. So uh, it's not a bad um, coin-up conversion overall. Uh, done okay. It's not as good as some of the others we've looked at, but it was playable, okay? Uh, Bubble Bobble New, which come packaged on this same cartridge, had upgraded graphics, and the sound was much improved along with the sound effects. But, as I've said, and I'll keep saying, we're only comparing the originals. So did you own Bubble Bobble on any handheld system? If so, which one? Uh, is this available on Switch? Has anyone got a Nintendo Switch that they're playing uh, a bubble ball along? If so, let me know. This is the final handheld system we're reviewing today for the Versus. Um, this is going up against, obviously, the two Nintendo systems we previously looked at. Now, this is the Game Gear version. Um, it's a direct port, really, from the Sega Master System. Um, so, it does also include that extra 100 levels, which is obviously very beneficial. So, a great job, really. Um, it translates fairly well. But there does seem to be a problem. If you look, to me, the sprites look a bit cramped. It looks to be as though it's sort of expanded and they've had to stretch it to get it on there and it feels it feels overcrowded. Um, so that does let it down a little bit. Um, this was two players as well. If you had a friend who had a link, uh, the link cable that you could use with it for this other game gear, but you know, all in all, a very good system, again, plus the 100 levels made all the difference, didn't it? That extra 100 levels, so, uh, hmm, interesting. Going to be a tough call, this one. And finally, the last two systems we look at are the most modern of today's Versus videos. Uh, except for the DS, of course. Yeah, I forgot about the DS. Not sure about the Game Boy Advance, too. Maybe that was uh, previously. But anyway, this is the Sega Saturn, as you can see. Um, as you would expect, which I did, um, a great, great conversion, really. Now, if you look closely at the enemies and the items that have been dropped and stuff, 
you can tell graphically they've had a bit of polish to them if you like uh, they've been slightly improved to look a bit sharper and a bit extra color or you know sort of a gradient put in there to, to, to sharpen it all up uh, and it's a good job it's a great conversion plays brilliantly and this come packaged uh, with rainbow islands so you got two games on the disc um, and it was a very very good effort uh, as you would probably expect so let's be fair uh, a great great job uh, let's have a look at the PlayStation 1 and see how it compared to this one shall we And the final game we're looking at is the PlayStation 1 version of Bubble Bobble. Now, as you can tell, this is exactly the same as the Saturn version, pretty much. Um, even the polished graphics that I was talking about from the item drops and the, the enemies and stuff is evident on this version as well. Again, uh, just like the, um, the Sega Saturn version, the PlayStation 1 version come packaged with Rainbow Islands as well. Um, so you got two games for the price of one, so to speak. Um, great job. Um, you would not be disappointed. Overall, I'm quite impressed with the majority of these conversions on all systems. So, uh, going to be a tough old call, this one. So, let me know in the comments, did you own any of these? Which was your favourite? Uh, and did you own the Amstrad version? It'd be great to hear if you did. Let me know. And if you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. Make me a happy man. Cheers. That was Bubble Bubble on all of them systems. Whew, set myself up a task and a half here, haven't I, eh? But anyway, now time for my judgments. But before we get into that, if you don't already do so, please hit that subscribe button, please. Because it makes me a happy man, it really does, all right? And do you know how much it costs you? Nothing. It's absolutely free. It's nada. Don't cost you a bean. So hit that button for me and like. But most importantly, above everything else, your comments, people, your memories of these games. Did I get my verdicts correct? Am I wrong? If so, tell me why. And future versus video suggestions. So without further ado, let's get to it. My verdicts. 8-bit home computer systems. As you can see there, they were quite impressive. All right, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. They were, on the majority, quite impressive. So in fourth place is the Amstrad CPC. This was the easily the least impressive of them all. I mean, it, it just it was it failed miserably. Sorry, Amstrad, don't know what you were thinking. I know it's been a remake, but we're going with the originals, all right? In third place, it goes to the ZX Spectrum. I quite like the sprites on the Spectrum version. I thought they were quite, you know, very arcade-esque. You knew you were playing Bubble Bubble. Um, but it just lacked certain areas. And in second position, I've given it to the BBC Micro. I never thought I would ever score a BBC Micro game so high. I was so impressed at this. Um, I wasn't aware that the BBC Micro was capable of, of doing a conversion like this. Unfortunately, it never got officially released, etc., as I explained during the, 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 the video of it. But my God, what a great, great job. So uh, pff, massive hats off to you BBC Micro supporters and fans, because you've really outshone yourselves this week. But of course, there has to be a winner, and it goes to the Commodore 64. Yes, the Commodore 64 takes it this week. Uh, good all-rounder. Played really, really nicely. So, well done, Commodore 64. A win in the bag for you. 16-bit home computer versions. Now, as you know, the Amiga and the ST went head-to-head -head on this. Both were probably not as playable as the 8-bit systems we looked at because of the controls, that up. Uh, to, for the jump and stuff instead of a jump button. What were you thinking? You did it on both of these, so that was unfortunate. Um, both graphically to look at, both looked good. 
Um, but the, the spitting of the bubbles on both was very, sh um, as, as I said, problematic because you couldn't fire them off like duh, 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 duh. it was like duh, 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 which isn't like the machine at all. If you rattle them off, you rattle off loads. So that detracted from the gameplay. Uh, both very, very similar, very hard to make a judgment. But if I had to choose one, I would choose the Amiga ever so slightly because the. Uh, I just felt that the, the, the sound was just slightly sharper. But to be honest, it's probably pretty much a draw. But hey, I'm giving it to one. I'll give it to the Amiga. So well done, ST and Amiga. But you weren't that playable either of you, I'm afraid. But Amiga takes it. Now the 8-bit console versions. Both of these were really, really nice. Both very playable. Both very good. But. There has to be a winner. And this week, it goes to the Sega Master System. Simply because that extra 100 levels. You Master System owners back in the day, we were well spoilt with this. An extra 100 levels? I don't own this, but I will be. Trust me. I will be seeking this one out. I'll be And now we come to the handheld systems. Now, as I explained, I missed out the original Game Boy version of this and I missed out the Game Boy Color version of this because they weren't direct um, 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 conversions of the arcade machine, okay? Similar sort of gameplay and stuff, but level design, everything, it wasn't a coin-op conversion. But we come to the three versions that were in it and it goes like this. In third position, I'll give it to the Game Boy Advance. All right? Looked all right. Weren't too bad. In second position, it went to the Game Gear. As I said, it looked nice, but it felt squashed. It felt, it felt, I don't know, it felt stretched. It just didn't look right to me. But it did give you the extra 100 levels that the Master System did. So, respect for that. So, the winner goes to the Nintendo DS. Just a perfect arcade conversion, really. Really well done. Great job. So the DS takes it. I know this might be a bit unfair because all three of them, them handhelds I've mentioned, were all released at different times, all different generations. But, hey, I've got to break it down somehow because there's just far too many versions I'm looking at. And finally, we come to the PlayStation 1 versus the Sega Saturn. Now, as I said when you were watching this, the graphics were slightly polished uh, of the main characters and the fruits and stuff and the items and the enemies. So they had a bit of an extra um, a touch to them, if you like, which was nicely done. Both versions completely identical, nothing really in it. I think one had faster loading times, I've read somewhere, but I, I'm not going to get down and start drilling down that much, all right? So, a complete draw between the Saturn and the PS1. The and rightly so, because they were both exactly the same. So anyway, folks, I've been OG Duffy. Thanks for watching. You've been great as always. And let me have your comments. Hit the like, subscribe, do all that stuff for me, please. But let me have your thoughts. Do you remember this game? Do you remember it at the arcade? Did you own it on any of the systems we've covered today? And uh, am I right with my verdicts? If you think I'm wrong, tell me so. Because I do like the debate and I love that bit of banter we get going on, folks. And share your memories and your thoughts and your history of these games. Because you guys have knowledge far exceeds mine. The stuff you guys know is amazing. Anyway, I've been OG Duffy. See you all again next week. Cheers.